Hello everyone and welcome to Obsidian Soft. In today's short Arduino tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to interface this 16 by 2 LCD display with Scratch using PictoBlocks. So without further ado, let's begin. So a quick disclaimer, this tutorial only works with LCD displays with an I2C module on the back. So what this means is that instead of you having to connect all the pins on top individually to the Arduino, you have a module on the back, this one over here, which reduces all these pins to just four. So if you don't have an I2C module on the back of your LCD, this tutorial is not for you. So what you're going to need for this tutorial is your Arduino, in my case the Arduino Uno, the LCD display with the I2C module on the back, and four male to female jumper wires to connect everything together. So on the back over here, you have a potentiometer, which I'll return to in a bit, and four pins, ground, VCC, SDA, and SCL. So I'm going to go ahead and connect all of my wires. I'll connect ground to the brown one, red to VCC, green to SDA, and yellow to SCL. So over on the Arduino, we'll have our VCC pin connected to the five volt pin over here, just like that. Ground will be connected to any ground pin. The green SDA wire will be connected to the A4 analog pin over here. And the yellow SCL wire will be connected to the A5 analog pin. Now that that's done, all that's left is to connect the Arduino and program it. So over on PictoBlocks, we're going to first choose our board on the top. In my case, it's the Arduino Uno. Before connecting it through your COM port. In my case, it's COM5. Once it's connected, make sure the mode is selected to stage before uploading your firmware. It might take a moment, so just wait for it to upload. Once that's done, go to the left, scroll down to display modules, and click. Here you can see all the LCD display related blocks. But first we need to initialize it. On the top you will see two initialization blocks, but we're going to ignore the top one since we have an I2C module. So let's drag this one over here. And as for the address, most LCD displays will have 0x27, but yours might be 0x20 or something else. I'll provide a link below to find out your address if the code does not work for you. The other blocks we have are write to display, set cursor, clear display, and a mode selection one, which we'll return to in a bit. So let's go ahead and test our display first. So I'm going to first initialize it by bringing the initialization block to the top. Then I'm going to clear the display and going to write hello world to it. And let's click it. So this might work for you, but in most cases it won't. So over here on the display, you will see that nothing is showing for me. But before you panic, let's test something. On the back on the I2C module, you will see this potentiometer, which basically controls the contrast of the display. As you can see, even though we click the hello world block, nothing is showing. But that can mean that your contrast is either too high or too low. So let's go back here and using a screwdriver, mine's a little big, but it'll work anyways. Let's slowly turn the potentiometer until something changes. So as you can see, hello world is now showing up, but now there's also these squares and this means I've turned it a little too much. So let's turn it back a little. You want to turn it just until the square stops showing, just like that. Now, as you can see, if I use the clear display block along with the right display block, my input shows on the top left of the screen. This is because the clear display block automatically sets the cursor as in the place where the display starts showing the text from to row 1, column 1, which, because the LCD display has 16 columns and 2 rows, is in the top left. So what if we want to move our text towards the middle of the display? Well, to do that, we could use the cursor position block. So essentially, by changing the column value from 1 to some larger number such as 5, we are moving the cursor forward. Therefore, the text will start from column 5 instead of the usual column 1. 
making it look like the text is towards the middle of the display. So now let's see this in action. I've set the cursor at column 3 and you can see how the obsidian soft text is in the middle of the display. Now it's important that the clear display block is placed before the cursor set block, otherwise it'll just override it and set the cursor back to the row 1 column 1 position. If I set the cursor to row 2, you'll see the text goes down to row 2 on the display. I can also move the text back to the left by setting it back to column 1. Now if the column number or text is too large, it won't fit within the display. You can see how only part of Obsidian Soft is showing on the screen. For this, we can bring in the set mode block. By selecting scroll display to left and clicking it, we can shift the entire row to the left. You can see how repeatedly clicking the block makes it look like the text is scrolling. Now let's do a quick overview of the remaining modes. Blink mode inserts a blinking square at the end of your text as seen here. Meanwhile, cursor mode adds an underline symbol at the end of the text. No display and display modes just make your text appear or disappear and the scrolling mode has already been discussed. And so that essentially wraps up this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and like. And as always, thanks for watching.